<coughs> yes, the Mascatunga Arts Festival is a, uh, exactly a month from today. It's June the 3rd, which is the first Saturday in June, all right? And uh, it will run from, we advertise, from 9 to 3 is when our uh, booths will be open and so forth. Actually, the opening ceremony and so forth does not occur until 10 o'clock, but the reason we moved that up to 9 was because so many people come early in the morning and start looking at the booth, um, the products that the booth have, has for sale. And so uh, we, we moved it to 9 o'clock because we have a hard time getting our booths set up fast enough sometimes. Um, everything is pretty much the same. There are a few things going to be different this year. This is our 48th year. I was telling Mr. Weibel, we are the longest continuously running art show in Oklahoma, the oldest and the longest. We're not the oldest if you take the word consecutively out of there. There are some that started earlier than Neskatunga, but we are the, we have had a festival every year since then. So two years from now will be our 50th and we hope to make it a real big uh, deal when we have our 50th. We're shooting for that. One thing that's going to be a little bit different this year is our quilt show. We're not going to do a complete quilt show as we have in, have in the past at the lobby, in the lobby of the courthouse. We're going to have two or three, perhaps four different people through the day that are going to set up there in the lobby and demonstrate hands-on quilting, embroidering, uh, we've got um, knitting, two different kinds of knitting, loom knitting as well as hand knitting, and we're working on a couple of others, and we'll have just chairs and tables in there, and people can come and go, and we'll advertise which time each of those things will be. So I hope that will be real interesting to people, and we've just, just decided to do that. It's hard to do that quilt show. Get, uh, there's just an awful lot of work in moving the quilt racks and getting enough quilts ready to show, so we're going to shoot for a really big one here in the future is what we want. We, I wish I, I didn't even think to bring it today. We have a donated painting, watercolor, that Arnie Anderson has done and given to us <coughs> to raise money. He wants us to raise money. I don't know how we're supposed to raise money on it. I've been trying. I've been trying to do solid auction for about a month. That we, I think, have one name on there. You know, twenty-five dollars or something. You know, uh, it's a watercolor that reminds me somewhat of your Afghan that the Kiwanis and the Rotary did. In that he went around with a camera and took what he considers iconic buildings here in Alva and surrounding area. Then he did watercolors of those. It's, it's in the gallery right now. It's been in the gallery for about the last two or three weeks. I'm going to move it to the run meet for Friday night there and then we'll go from there to see what we can do to get more people to see it. But we want to have a silent auction and auction that off and uh, that will raise money. He gave us that just to raise money. He likes our Neskatunga Festival. He's been the judge several years and he's even shown his work too here, his watercolor work. Uh, speaking of judge, uh, Connie Moore is going to be our judge this year. This is the first time she will have judged the festival. That's Connie Young. For some of you, she grew up here. She lives down by Winoka, owns the Fifth Sister Art Gallery down there in uh, Winoka. So she's going to be our judge this year of our festival, and so we're looking forward to that. Um, I was asked today by two or three different people, we, I think we're about at average of the number of, of uh, entries that have rented booths so far. I think we're just about where we normally are at this time. One interesting thing, we have more from Kansas than we do from Oklahoma at this point in time. I don't know what to blame that on, but that's, that's the way it is. Some from as far as Wichita, which is interesting. We uh, keep the two categories separate as best we can of the crafts and the fine arts. We're trying to do what the dream of the people that set up Neskatunga to begin with, and that's to keep it handmade, made by an individual. It's not purchased from China <coughs> and sent here by mail, we hope. And uh, <laughs> some people have done some of that, you know. <laughs> About four years ago, I started, I went outside to look around from the office building there, and there were lots of little kids shooting these plastic water guns. I thought, well, where are they getting those? Well, sure enough, that was in somebody's craft booth over there. <laughs> and they, they weren't handmade. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a little bit of 
bit of problem with that sometimes, but we're trying to keep it as pure as it can be. Uh, Rachel Spellman is, is in charge of entertainment, and we have live entertainment going on all day long, starting at, as I said, the opening ceremonies at 10, and uh, we do, the mayor will welcome everybody. I hope he will do that this year for us. I haven't asked him yet. And we usually have someone sing the national anthem and have uh, introduced the day and uh, have someone lead in prayer. And then we start our, about 10, 15, 10, 20, we start our, our uh, live entertainment. We've had several people say to us through the years that how much they enjoy the live entertainment going on on the stage, that a lot of places they go, it's it's piped music all day long, you know, tape music that they listen to and they enjoy hearing the live entertainment. In case of inclement weather, it will be at the fairgrounds. Again, it'll be in the, if we have to move in for uh, rain or something, and it could happen, you know. Um, are there any questions? Is there anything else? I... Yes. Uh, how is it funded? I'm asking some questions <coughs> that I already know the answer to. Okay. So that Paul can live here uh, it is funded through we have membership that people pay $25 for a membership for a year uh, or maybe that's gone up now I think maybe it's harder than that it might be 40 now I can't even remember but anyway it's hardly anything but uh, mostly we get uh, a lot of help from our tax and tourism here in town we and they what primarily is our biggest cost is advertising uh, to advertise here, and we advertise in uh, on three radio stations. Now we use the Quake, which is a new one that came out of Kansas just last year. It was the first year we used that, and we had a lot of comments from that one. Uh, we do the Alva state, the Alva radio, of course, both stations, and Enid. We're not going to do Oklahoma City this year because we just didn't feel like it had cost us enough that it wasn't quite. It was very very expensive for for what we thought the value was. And uh, we do Enid and we do Woodward also for the radio stations. We do, um, um, but the tax and tourism helps us greatly on that. The newsgram is one of our best ways of advertising is the newsgram because it goes out in this whole area to lots of homes and businesses. So that's one of our best ways. But we couldn't do this without the tax and tourism money that they give us that we really couldn't. Ida. If I go down there at 10 o'clock and I'm knocking around at the festival till 3 o'clock, I'm going to be starving. There you is go. There you would probably want eat? something to eat, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes. We have our favorite booths that will be open again this year. We have the taco salad booth, which is done by Electric Gold, or our vocal department is, runs that one. Uh, hum hamburgers and hot dogs is the uh, speech department does the hamburgers and hot dogs, and then we have drinks, pop and uh, uh, water that is done by the band, the instrumental music department does that. And then we give scholarships and we give help to each of those, the, actually the money we make off those booths go back. So we don't use any other food <coughs> vendors. I get an awful lot of calls about food vendor, vendors wanting to come in and sell, and we don't. We just do our own so we can give it back to our own students. And those three entities get money from us, also the art department. We usually help the middle school library every year. The Girl Scouts, because they run our snow cone booth for us. The Girl Scouts come in in the afternoon and do our snow cone booth, so we usually give them some help. Uh, the uh, Rainbow Girls are our gophers for the day, and some of them come as early as 6.30 and 7 in the morning to start helping people move things into their um, booths, and uh, we couldn't do it without them either, so we appreciate that. Can you talk a little bit about the evening of the arts coming up this Friday, because once again, Paul is not. Yes, um, okay. this Friday night is... Uh, what we're going to have is high school art. This is kind of the end. Uh, Greg won't do something like a gala for it. He said they never have a chance to show their things quite as much as, they don't have a place as much as some others do. So we're having all high school art in the, in the running meet is what we're going to have. We have re we'll have refreshments there too. But, uh, and some of the high school students are going to be there to talk about their art, to actually be there, which is very helpful to us standing there, you know, when people come through and parents come through and want to see what their students have done, you know, and so it works real well. We're going to have some students there through the evening 
and uh, two of the students are going to play guitar and do the live entertainment for us for a Friday night. So we've got that going on too. Uh, I think uh, Calvin Grable, I believe, is at the gallery. I believe Calvin Grable has a display, among some other things, at the gallery. This And on another subject, uh, Act One Theater has a production. Has a play going on, yes. It says in the newsgram today for you to go down there between six and something and look at the set. See how they, they're set up. The play actually starts at 7.30. Friday night, so the play is Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, so the play will be going on starting at 7.30, but you're invited to come into the Act One Theater and see their set and meet the <coughs> actors and actresses. And uh, then there are some, <laughs> some others that are, are there set up in front, on the west side of the square in particular, that are set up with some different things. Uh, one thing I'm kind of close to is, is uh, the LifeWise is a new, uh, program that has been in our middle school just this six weeks of this past semester and it's a brand new program uh, helping young people make good decisions about life and about their future and about uh, a lot of things connected with that. Uh, Marion Payne is going to be down in front of uh, all things fabulous down there giving away pieces of homemade pie by the way. Or is this? <laughs> 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 so you might want to travel by that side and get into this mentioned that Nikki's going to try to recruit Candace Melton to be a star of a play at Act One. So one Is of that own, right? One of our own Kawanians can be I was an unconfirmed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way rumors get started. <laughs> the way rumors get started. <laughs> If you remember the play from several years ago, The Red Velvet Cake Wars? Well, yeah. this is a uh, follow-up of that, yes. This is those same people that things got pretty desperate over that group of women that had a contest to see who could make the best red velvet cake. And so this is several years later of a sequel to that, which <laughs> if it's anything like the first one was, it'll be well worth your evening. Uh, <clears throat> anything else, Arden? Does that sound like? I have one other question. Okay. Do you know who the founders were back 49 years ago? <laughs> you were there, weren't you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 if I'd think a little while, I could sure think of probably who some of them were. But right, you kind of scared me off the top of my head. It started Vera Strasbaugh. And Fran Brunstetter was part of it. Fran Brunstetter was, and Vera Strasbaugh, and uh, um, Jerry Smith. Jerry Smith, and Herb Smith, even was involved. The Haywards. Oh, yeah. Jack mm -hmm. Hayward mm -hmm. and, and his wife. Uh, they started the old, uh, there was a grocery store on the corner of where Marshall's Funeral Home is now. And it started there showing uh, some of those people as well as a few others just showing their paintings and things had on easels in, in that ideal market. And then it moved to outdoor of the market and then it moved down to the square. And, but that's how it started. 1969, I believe. Would that be right? Would that make it 48 years if this 2017? I think it would. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Not being a homegrown album, where did the name Neskatunga come from? <laughs> it's the Indian, the word the Indians used here for the Salt Fork River for this branch, the, the South. Tribe. I mean, I wish you hadn't asked me that. I don't know, but well, it's it so it Kiowa. It'd have to be Kiowa or Cherokee, Cherokee or something. Uh, I hate to tell you, it means dirty water. <laughs> well, there you go. That's what Neskatunga means. I, I, Charlotte, I imagine it was Kiowa because the little town of Neskatunga yes. over at the lake. Yes. That, what that stands for, dirty water. Right. And the Kiowa are the ones that got Then, that. then I would imagine that there would have been Kiowa off around here. That's what they call this river that comes through here. So that name was decided upon by the, I suppose, by the founders, you know, of, of the well, It's fitting for the lake over there. <laughs> <laughs> so 
start my hand. Yeah. 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 That's all I have scribbled down here if there are any other questions. Thank you for it.